I've missed you guys. I know. It's so weird because usually like we see each other at least once a week <laughs> during the during this whole thing. It's been very often. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a few weeks now since I've actually seen your beautiful faces. I know. Well, Anna Louise is back in clinic three days a week, right, Anna Louise? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And then I'm now back two days a week. So that definitely has shifted the focus on where what you can do. And it's been uh, an interesting mix of stuff. That's for sure. Oh, I, I bet for sure. You've got your boys going back to school next week? Yes, they are. Um, we chose to go to in school. So one starts Thursday and one starts Tuesday. So by Friday, I'll be able to do like my happy dance where I have a few hours and we kind of sit down and do something instead of good for an hour and then go referee and then come back and go yeah. feed someone and come back. It seems like this broken up schedule will, I feel like I'll be a little bit more productive and I won't feel as, as unwound, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Me are too. your kids back at school this week, Beth, or is it next week that your kids start? It's next week. Okay. So they've been, uh, it's it, behaviorally, it's been a different kind of week. Cause I think, you know, they know it's coming. It's been so long. So I've been looking forward to it so much that I really wasn't considering the emotions that would start to kind of come to the surface for myself and for them. So it's, it's been an interesting, interesting week. The longest March break of our life. Longest March break. And I probably know from like me doing the back to work um, uh, webinar like two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, a lot of hygienists are going back in September. Yeah. But we were quite surprised with that, right? June and September were are the big return months. So there's a lot of hygienists out there like dealing with going back to school and going back to work at the same okay. time. That's it's a lot. Emotional month. It's an emotional month for sure. It is. Yeah. It is. Plus yeah. the change in weather. It's just it that doesn't help with the mm -hmm. up and down emotions. I so. miss July. <laughs> I want July back. <laughs> I know. It's it's really hard to think about going back to work. I can tell you for me, I started a new job. And so for me to go back in and to go through that whole thing, you know, it, it's crazy how how much it can affect you. You're excited for the new opportunity, your challenge for the new opportunity. It's, it's really, it's, it's really uh, a hard time. So we're here for you. We've all been there and uh, if you're going back to work in September. We're going to teach you some good tricks and things you can implement today from our lovely Tabitha. Um, but uh, you know, we are, we've all been there. So if you need to reach out to us, let us know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I think there, there may be some more people trickling in. Um, so right. It's about 12 o'clock, so we'll Perfect. get started. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping, like we always do. If you have a comment, then feel free to use the, um, the chat function. Um, it's a short segment, uh, so we kind of will try to get quest to questions if we can. But if you do have a question, if you use the Q&A function, then I'll be able to um, have a record of those questions and get you an answer if we don't get to it today. So chat if you have any comments, Q&A if there's a question that you are looking for an answer for today. And then we'll have a quiz to send afterwards and then you'll get your certificate as well. And one of the things, um, if you have your personal portal, um, the RDH view will be uploaded into that. So you can just go mm -hmm. on to that. It's at the members.dentalhygienequarterly.ca. Um, and then it'll be uploaded into that, then the questions will be there, and then you can get your certificate automatically. So if you go through the RDHU portal, it's a little bit different, but it, just know if you do have your personal portal, it'll be in there probably early next week. All right, so thank you everybody for joining us, and thank you to the, the cast members of the RDHU, and thank you to Tabitha Magnuszewski. Did I say it right? You did, thank right, you. First time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we're so happy to have you here. Um, Tabitha is the manager of professional services for Ivaclar Vivident. And so Tabitha lives in Buffalo, New York. And we've been working with you now for probably a year and a half. We've had you on our, um, on the Dental Hygiene Quarterly. We had you on with RDHU. So um, everybody always enjoys you, Tabitha. You are a wealth of knowledge and uh, we just are so happy to have you here. Um, Beth and I had a chat with Tabitha, I guess it was probably about a month ago, and we were just having a nice uh, discussion and then we were just thinking, 
this is a great topic for the RDH view. So you had shared a story with us, which I'm sure you're going to share with us again, but it was all about leadership and finding your voice, uh, not only in your practice, so like with your, well, in your practice, but with your dentist, with the office manager, with other dental hygienists, with your patients and your clients, but also having a voice on a personal level as well. And um, so I know we all struggle with that from time to time. And uh, I think right now during this time with the pandemic too, a lot of people feel like they don't have a voice. They're doing what they have to do. Um, and maybe going back to things that they used to do. And that's the biggest thing for me. I always think that if we don't take advantage of this pandemic and we don't make change, it's a waste of everything. <laughs> you know, now is the time, like we should not go back and practice the way we used to practice. Now is the time to step back and really be thinking about different things that we can really turn this appointment from one of a, you know, a lot of people think they're just coming in for a cleaning. So one from a, just a cleaning to a very medical appointment. It's a big deal now to come in and have your teeth, um, you know, have your hygiene therapy. It's, it's a big deal. So we want our patients to know that, right? This is a really important thing. And, um, and we want to get that message across. And then, you know, with Ivoclar, I know we're going to talk about some of the products, but you have products that are totally game changers. And um, I know once people start using them, they love them, the studies are there. So we're excited to hear and have this discussion with all of you today. And uh, so again, thanks so much for being here with us. No, thank you so much for the invitation. I always love discussing these topics with you and the, the team. And it's just really great to learn from you guys as much as um, I feel that, you know, we have these conversations and you know, I've been inspired. I've been inspired through this pandemic and I've been inspired by all of my friends and colleagues and the dental hygienists out there who are taking advantage of this time to really become informed. Um, they're learning more and looking at the research and understanding, you know, the disease and how disease progresses and how we, we obtain these diseases. And so I've really been inspired by some of the opportunities that we have available to us in just doing that, bringing our voices out into the open and becoming leaders in the field. Um, I was inspired and I know we had this conversation uh, a while back, you and, and me and Beth, about um, a conversation that I had with Dr. Leanne Brady. And Dr. Leanne Brady is a general dentist uh, from Arizona. And we were talking early on in the pandemic about, you know, reopening and reopening plans. And I know a lot of my friends and colleagues are concerned about going back to work and what that looks like for them. And, and I said to her, you know, how are you doing with your reopening plan and discussing with your team members about what the new protocols might be or what precautions or the concerns that they may have in, in returning to work. And she had said to me, you know, I brought the team in and, and I actually actively listened to what their concerns were. I, I really wanted to be present during that conversation and really hear behind maybe what the words were that they were saying so that I could address all of their concerns. And a little light bulb kind of went off for me and I thought, how often am I personally actively listening, right? Am I listening when the doctor says, oh, we need to see X amount of patients per day? Uh, am I listening to the fear in their voice about them losing their livelihood and them losing their business and them not being able to, to you know, take care of their families? Um, and are they actively listening to me when I'm voicing those concerns about, you know, I want to make sure that I'm keeping myself safe and my family safe and um, my patients and my clients safe? Am I doing the best care that I can with the restrictions that maybe are in place right now? And so, uh, you know, it was really inspiring to me, though, that the trust between all of the team members and, and knowing that, you know, that my dentist and my doctor is thinking of me and, and my well-being and, and actively listening to me and and I'm part of that conversation. I'm part of those protocols. I'm part of the, the reopening plan. And, and, you know, sometimes I think we just passively are part of a practice. 
Um, but now I think this pandemic gives us a really nice, unique opportunity to say, to, to ask the questions, hey, can I help you with that reopening plan? Can I help you develop the protocols for when patients are, are coming into the office and what we're going to do? Um, can I help you with de determining what PPE we need beyond what the requirements or regulations are? Um, so I, I really think this is a unique opportunity for us to, to take all that information we're learning about and really become the leaders, become the voice uh, for our profession and for healthcare. I really like how you do that because I think time you can approach it with, this is what I need instead of can I help you? And I think if we approach some of our employers or situations in a phrasing the information a different way, we might get a better response because especially in Ontario, they're at a bit of a standstill, there's discrepancies and maybe just approaching it like, can I help you or can I educate you on why I think this is important versus I need this and this is, this is my bottom line. And you're right, I I'm not saying, everybody has their, as I call it, their pandemic snowball, snow globe. It's like some of us have been shaken up a lot more than others, but it's all landing. And I think trying to approach that because you're right, everybody has stories behind it and listening to what they're saying and try to understand maybe why they're agreeing or not agreeing. Mm -hmm. and, even no. if, and even if they're already back in their practice, it's not too late to say, you know, we've been back now for, for a couple of months. Can we have a meeting and let's talk about what's working, what's not working and make a plan on, on how I can help you or how we can, you know, jump in a little bit more to help each other to make things a bit more efficient and, and more, um, you know, productive and, and, and all that. So um, whether you're starting back in September or whether you've already been back for a few months, it's never too late to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and and Martha, one of the biggest kind of struggles that's going on in dentistry right now is in regards to the aerosols. So that's something that there's discussions going on between the dental hygienists and the office managers and the, and the dentists themselves, as far as how do we get this under control? Is there any, are there any tips or are there any products that you can suggest that might help with kind of minimizing the aerosol part of things? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I know, you know, depending on your area, we, we've all been kind of thrown into, do we polish? Are we able to polish? Are we able not to polish? Are we able to use our hand pieces or not use our hand pieces? And, and so aerosols is a huge topic. I know we're reverting back to using our high speed suction or some of those high speed suction evacuation aids like relief or isolate systems that really help to minimize the amount of aerosols produced into the, into the air, into our dental offices. And so we have a product that I love for not only visibility and accessibility, but also in kind of minimizing the aerosols a little bit. And that is the Optergate. And if you haven't used the Optergate, there's so many uses for the Optergate. I love this product. Um, it, it's a lifesaver whenever you're doing, you know, regular standard VPS impressions or alginate impressions, especially with those people who have facial hair or, um, but any time that you need to expand the visibility in the field for your diagnostics or your assessments, um, this latex free cheek and lip retractor is phenomenal. Um, it gets everything out of the way. It allows you to really be able to see the dentition and to work in the, in the oral cavity without having the cheeks and lips in the way. And I know for me, and I don't know if you guys have similar stories, but you know, I used to take this, the saliva evacuation tip and I would kind of take the slow speed one and you kind of just make it into a J and you stick it in the buccal cavity and then I'd have my hands free and I can go through and I can do my, my treatment. And you know, now using high speed, you don't have that opportunity. And so I'll be honest, I fumbled a little bit, you know, I was, I was a little awkward and I, I might, you know, not be aware of exactly where I was suctioning and you kind of get the cheek every once in a while, or you, you touch the lip or, or whatnot. And so what I like about the Optergate as well is that if I'm going to have one of those instances where maybe I'm not paying attention as much as I should be, um, I'm going to then suck up the, the Optergate and not necessarily the, the, the lip or the cheek. And so it kind of gave me a little bit of forgiveness there as well. And so I do like it for that aspect. Um, 
we offer it in three sizes. So there's a junior size in pink and blue, and I, I have a couple here that I can show you. So they're really cute. Um, and then we also have a, a small size and a regular size. And I will say that they run on the, on the larger side. So your junior size will actually fit most of your pediatric patients or your uh, smaller sized um, oral cavities. And your regular is going to be really the large cavity, oral cavities where you're trying to move the, the cheeks and lips out of the way. But it's a great tool, like I said, with scanning, photo photography, um, any of your treatment, varnishes. I, I can't say it enough um, how much I like it. But you could even <laughs> eat it in right from the beginning, you know, and you could do, you could do your, your ultrasonics, you could do your hand scaling, you could do everything with it. And it's like, we should have had that 20 years ago. <laughs> so when I, when I first saw it, like, this is like, it seems so simple, right? It's like, we're working and we have all this stuff we have to deal with. This just opens it up and it makes life so much easier instead of struggling with so many different applications, right? And then, and then for me, um, like you look at the time, like when I saw that, it was like eight to 10 minutes per hour, like you're being more efficient. So now like everybody's feeling like we have to try and do as much as we can in this appointment. And, um, you know, so if you're, if you're looking for ways to make things a little bit more efficient for you and less stressful, I would definitely, um, have, have you look at that at the object right. but there are big ergonomic benefits here because because we have all those clients that are like yeah right yeah. you know their lips are like the iron curtain and yeah. if you if you are trying to retract that weight is very bad for us and we don't appreciate over the day you know all of a sudden your arm's killing you because you had two clients you know, that, yeah. that um, are just like totally ironclad about you know trying to get in there and like it, and you said 145 times could you open a little more please could you open a little more please and <laughs> try and relax try and relax your lips and cheek and this does it for you it's 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 awesome yeah. from a from a client's perspective too because a big thing at least in our practices is like you know you go back it's customer service explaining some of what you're doing different patients are much happier having that in than cheek retractors or anything else. It's softer. It's easier. It, it looks kind of cool. I'm like, some of them like take selfies. I'm like, here you go. Take a selfie of this, figure it out. But, um, patients or clients, they just, they enjoy it. And I use it with my ortho people and it's like, okay, just literally pulled everything back. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can see, I can isolate. I can do all these things. They're comfortable, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I loved it for ortho. Um, Tabitha, is it like for anybody who's just maybe thinking about using it or starting to get used to using it, are there any tips to make that transition a little bit easier when they're starting to use it? Oh, absolutely. So I would say it's going to take you about two to three clients, patients to, to kind of get used to the maneuverability of inserting it. So definitely don't get frustrated the first time around. And if you're finding that it's falling out or it's not fitting quite correctly, you should really get a nice field of view. So if you're not seeing that, if it's, if it's not really retracting the, the cheeks and the lips, I would suggest really checking the size because a lot of times we use the wrong size. We might be using a, one that's too large or too small and then it will just kind of pop out or it won't, won't really retract the way that we want it to. So we do have a nice size gauge on the package um, the package is, as I don't know if you guys have seen that they're individually wrapped too, which I love in this environment as well. So, you know, it's a one-time use for per patient. So um, there is a size gauge on it. You would go ahead and measure the patient from corner to corner when they're at rest and then determine the size based on that. And it will tell you whether it's a junior or small or a regular sized uh, optogate that you would use. The other thing I like to say is um, to go ahead and have the client or patient lick their lips. And when they lick their lips this way, they're able to, it kind of forms a seal as well. So again, we don't want any aerosols kind of popping through. And it also is easier to remove. So definitely choosing the right size and then having the patient or client lick their lips before insertion really, really benefits and really helps with using the Octrogate. So let's just talk briefly about, um, okay, I'm a dental hygienist. I want to implement Optrigate because here we are about implementation, right? 
So, you know, this is going to see like a lot of people are going to see it. Oh, it's an expense, right? So for me, I'm thinking, because as you're all talking, I'm thinking, okay, so yes, I want one for sure. As a dental hygienist, I want to use this. And I'm sure the dentist wants to use it too, but there's so much expense added on right now. So um, I always think that when we go in and we ask for things, we just don't go in and say, I want to use the OptiGate. It's going to help me. I would say, I want to, I would set a time aside. I would have a meeting aside and I would have it like a, like a case presentation. You know, this is how I'm discovering what's going on right now with the appointment. And this is, you know, if I implement this, the, these, these are the benefits to the practice, right? They want to know what is the benefit? Like, um, if, if you're just coming in with ideas and you just want things and you're not really, um, you know, having a plan, you have to have a plan. And if you put it down on paper and you present it that way, um, it's important to you. It's important to me that I want to, I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to add this in and these are all the benefits of doing this. And then you can even show, you know, the time that we're going to save. And, and also for you as a, as a, you know, a team member, to not be totally fatigued. I already have this, you know, issue with, you know, if you're not doing ultrasonics at the moment, or, you know, you already have all these other things going on. Can we do this? Can we make this, you know, an easier transition? And this, these are all the, all the, you know, status quo. We are where we are now. If we implement it, this is where we could be, you know? So, yeah. And a huge thing for, well, for ortho or for anything, it's just isolation. Like you can actually see what you're doing. And so if you can improve your isolation, then you're going to also improve uh, the office bottom line. You're going to improve patient and client experience. They're not going to be coming back as much. So honestly, it is, it is a huge winner. And I totally mm -hmm. think you should, if you haven't implemented it, you should get some samples, bring it into your office and have them tried out because ask your clients, ask your patients, they're going to tell you they like it and use that as your feedback to help promote it. Cause it really is a game changer, honestly. Right. Now, one of the things, Tabitha, like we have, so there's a lot of time between seeing patients and a lot of people haven't even gone back to their practice yet, right? So I have a whole other webinar on that, on how to educate your patients to, to get them to come back in. But um, so what do you recommend um, between, between the times, between the appointments? Like you have some really great um, products that we've called unsung heroes. I've, I told you that earlier. Um, and I now put that slide into my presentations where I have the cape and the, and the superhero guy there, because these are really game changers, right? It's like, um, one of the products that you have is the Servitech Plus, right? So, um, you know, when the pandemic first started, I had this dream, um, and this is how I usually come up with all my ideas. It comes to me in, in the night when I'm sleeping. Um, but I had this dream. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get, you know, offices have to give patients their, their power brush. They have to put the Servitec Plus in the bag and we'll show them how to paint it on their teeth. Um, so I was like totally pumped because it lasts the three months. It's the chlorhexidine and the, and the thymol varnish. So I was like, totally, this is it. Cause we can protect our people when they're not here. Cause we are telling everybody that's not essential. But meanwhile, we're telling our patients and our clients that they have to come in every few months. And I was like, oh, no, you don't. So I was like, let's protect them at home. But I looked into it. I can't do it. So because it has to be applied by a dental professional. So now, but now is the time that you can implement it, right? You can protect them for three months and it's one application. There's, you know, other things that you can do, but they have to come in every week for you to, to apply this other application. Yeah. This is the one time. So if you could talk a little bit about that. And also yeah. the helio seal as well. That's another great in between protective application. Yes. And I love that you brought up Servitec Plus. I absolutely love that product. It was a must in for me in patient treatment. It became one of my go tos. I tried for every patient to apply it. And as you mentioned, it, it lasts three months. So Servitec Plus is a chlorhexidine thymol varnish. Um, it is applied professionally. It is clear. So I think that's a huge, huge factor when talking patient compliance is that it, you apply it, it's applied, and it dries clear. Um, and again, it's professionally applied, and it lasts up to three months. 
Um, it's indicated for hypersensitive cervicals. So any of those patients who, you know, come in and they're saying, oh, you know, this spot hurts when I have ice cream or is sensitive when the cold air hits it or the cold water, this works phenomenally at blocking those dentinal tubules and making sure to protect those exposed root surfaces. And then also it has, um, you know, it's a varnish. So it does provide a coating over the teeth that helps prevent um, the teeth or the bacteria from attaching to the teeth. And so, you know, you have that benefit. And then it is chlorhexidine, chlorhexidine and thymol. So you have the benefits of chlorhexidine without the staining. And the reason we don't have staining like you do with some of the chlorhexidine rinses is the chlorhexidine rinses are a different formulation. So they're a different chemistry compo composition and you're using them multiple times um, throughout the day. Right? and for an extended period of time. So you're constantly using them and, and using them daily. So you have that affinity for building up and staining the teeth and the bacteria sticks to it versus the tooth. So, so again, it's, it's gonna have that factor. This is a one-time application. Um, it is wonderful in that it doesn't stain. And then it's, it's applied super gingerly. So you're actually applying it at the you know, that the gum margin, and it's protecting those surfaces from the bacteria and biofilm getting in there um, without being in contact with your fibroblasts, because I know some people are concerned with, you know, some of the, the research that's out there about, again, prolonged use of chlorhexidine, or talking chlorhexidine, um, diacetate, or, you know, gluconate versus diacetate. So, you don't have any of those concerns. And it's a one-time application that you then would reapply after three months. So you're getting that three month window where it's it's effective. And you don't have to have the patient come back, you know, for another treatment. Mm -hmm. Also one step. So again, you know, the application time when you're talking chair chair time and we're trying to reduce the amount of time the patient's in the chair, it takes about a minute and a half to apply the, to the entire dentition. You would go ahead and you would dry the tooth surface. I used to take my two by two, and especially now that we're trying to minimize how much we're using our air water syringe tips, you go ahead, take your two by two or a cotton roll, go ahead and dry the tooth surface, apply the Servitac Plus varnish, and by the time I would get over to the opposite side, it's the solvent has already evaporated, it's already dry, it's very thin, it doesn't leave your teeth fuzzy feeling, um, because I know a lot of the fluoride varnishes kind of leave that fuzzy feeling on your teeth, and so the, the benefits are really great, and I, I do use that term, unsung hero of the office, um, in, in all my presentations as well, because I just feel like we don't talk about that product enough. There's something else um, about the thymol, and that kind of gets me excited because it's got the anti-fungal uh, properties, anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. properties, and I feel like you're combining two different chemical chemical agents really together. And I think that that is one of the things that really sets you apart from other products for sure. So you can probably talk more about that as well. Yeah, and you know what the benefit also with the thymol allows the chlorhexidine to be slow releasing. So, you know, when we're talking about that three month window of efficacy, we're really talking about that slow release process and how the product is slow releasing from the tooth structure. And, and as we know with any type of varnish system, you know, the longer that the varnish is in contact with the tooth without being disturbed um, is, is where we get the most benefit. So again, if, if you're, clients and patients aren't running to the car and wanting to, you know, pick it off or brush their teeth right away because it's that fuzzy sweater feeling on their teeth, then, you know, the longer they're going to let it retain on their, their tooth structure and the more benefit they're going to get from it. It is a lot thinner though. It's not as like, I've seen some of the other varnishes that are so like you leave and it's like, oh my gosh, I just had my teeth done and look at them, you know, so yeah. that's kind of, it's more of a, of a negative experience. Um, so with this, they're not gonna have that, that look. They can go back to their office or, and not be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny, you know, we, I was, I, I work with Dr. Shashikant Singhal and 
you know, he's been going for his regular appointments and the first two that he went and he had seen us, he had Ceratec Plus applied. And this last one, we did a fluoride varnish instead. And he's like, I don't want to, you know, be disrespectful to fluoride varnish, but I would rather have Cervatec Plus any day because it just felt completely different. And the sensitivity as well, he's like, the I had a couple spots where I had some sensitivity and he goes, I don't, I don't have that with Cervatec Plus. Like it really protects those surfaces. So um, it was neat to hear it from his perspective. And I think you'll find that with some of your patients as well. So when would you use a fluoride varnish? Like would you use it at the same appointment or how would you determine if you want to use the fluorhexidine varnish versus a fluoride varnish? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And, and so I think of fluoride varnishes as part of the remineralization process. So if I have a high caries risk patient where I'm looking to go ahead and, you know, really protect the surface of the tooth by using a varnish, but also want to aid in that remineralization, that's where I'm looking at a fluoride varnish. If I'm looking at a patient that maybe is more periodontally involved and has more um, periodontal uh, bacteria present, I'm going to apply Cervatec Plus versus the fluoride varnish. The other application is for implants right? Fluoride varnish is not going to protect your implant surface, but Cervatac Plus is safe to use on your implants and your implant parts because it is pH neutral. So it's not going to affect the oxide layer of those implants. It's going to be able to protect the implants from biofilm. And it's something, again, additional that you can use in order to protect those surfaces and, and again, um, protect those patients. So you know, fluoride I'm really using for the high caries risk that maybe had a recent caries um, that I'm, I'm looking to remineralize. And, and then the Cervatec Plus, I'm looking for those more periodontally involved, maybe have generalized recession or haven't had a caries lesion in a while. Um, I think the people I, oh. that have um, limited access or example, scleroderma clients. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many, but I mean, in particular, and going through my head, my roster of, of, of clients that are, have difficult access, the gerontology types clients that are losing their mobility, and um, this would be uh, essential to their success. But can you do the, uh, both remineralize and Cervatec Plus at the same time? So unfortunately, the solvents in the materials may not be compatible. And so what happens is if you apply them both at the same time, you might actually be washing one away then, and so you wouldn't get the benefits of both. So our recommendation is to, to use the products at alternating appointments. So if you want to get the benefits of both, you know, use Cervatac Plus this visit, then go ahead and use your fluoride varnish the, the next visit. And that really will help to benefit your patients. And that's what we chose to do with Dr. Shashi. You know, we had done the same thing. We had done this Cervatec Plus at his first couple appointments. And then the last one, we did the fluoride varnish so that he was getting the benefits of both products. It's not always about billing. Sorry to interrupt, Anna Louise, but I know some people are probably watching. Okay, so I know my fluoride codes. Is there a code or a dis code description? Because each province, each state has different ways of looking at it. So I know you can't necessarily give us a number, but if they were to look at something that they could fill out to match the procedure they're doing, what would you suggest? So uh, there's a couple of things. And again, you know, we're not the experts on coding or insurance plans differ and how, you know, what's reimbursable is, is a whole nother conversation and individualized to the patient. But I always say, look at why you're using it. So if you're using it to protect um, the surfaces of an implant, right, and you're looking to prevent implants, you know, um, implantitis and, and those type of activities, you know, maybe it's, it's by description, but maybe there's the implant prevention code that you could use for that. If you're using it for desensitization of those hypersensitive roots and root surfaces, then, you know, you want to apply it there. If you're looking for prevention, you know, and you're using it as a prevention strategy for Cambra um, and things of that nature, then, then you could go ahead and do that. What we do know is we did apply for a code with the ADA 
and we have gotten it approved for a prevention code category. Um, and so we will go ahead and, um, you know, we will have that implemented and that will be available in 2021 or yeah, 2021. And so um, with the new code book, there will be a code that will include chlorhexidine varnish, which is really nice and we're excited about. Yeah. Um, so you'll have that opportunity. Um, and the other thing that we've heard some people have success with is really looking at the medical condition of the patient. So if they have an inf inflammatory disease and you're using this as a way to reduce inflammatory, you know, inflamm inflammation, <laughs> then listing that down um, as part of your description that this patient presents with diabetes, mellitus, or, or whatever their condition may be, also has been uh, successful in getting those codes reimbursed. So I hope that answered the question. <laughs> hey, taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, and there's a lot of dentists that use it for pre-prep, like for prepping before they do, right? So to help them make sure that they're going to get the best success with whatever they're doing, they'll prep that area with it as well. Mm -hmm. So again, this is something you could bring to your office and say, this is something that can be good for my patients, my clients, and also for you with yours and bring that to them. Yeah, I, I we know that a lot of dentists like to use it after they've prepped the tooth for a uh, full coverage restoration, for example. So they'll go ahead and just apply it around the margin of that tooth after they've temporized the tooth. And then the patient will, you know, goes home and when they come back, now the tissue is healthier, it, there's not as much bleeding. So when they go ahead and go to cement that final restoration, they're finding that the tissue is really nice and healthy and it really benefits them for sure. Well, I think this is where we have to use all of our skills and our leadership to kind of go through our process of care and figure out what does that client need. And so Servitech Plus is an option. But the other thing that sometimes I feel like is underutilized, whether it's done by the dentist or by the dental hygienist, is sealants. And, you know, sealants are a big factor that we have to bring in. And sometimes they need both. Sometimes they need one. I know you guys have an interesting product on sealants and you've got lots of information to share with us on that today. Yeah, you know, we have a new sealant, Helio Seal F Plus. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love this product. And I love it because of the handling and the ease of use of placement. And I'll explain why. So it is a great sealant. It is a light cure sealant. So the attachment is really great. It's going to have the longevity that we're looking for in a sealant. But I love it because the handling is such that we've optimized the filler particles and we've changed the cannula that the materials dispense through. So when you go to actually place the sealant, um, it goes exactly where you need it to go and it doesn't do this big glob. Um, and I know that's a scientific term, right? Big glob. Um, but I know for myself, whenever I was, no matter how you know, how much I tried, I would always take the syringe and as I was applying, I'd end up getting excess, a lot of excess. And then I'm taking a micro brush or an explorer and trying to get it into all the grooves and crevices. And I can tell you that, that just, you know, it ended up where I was doing a lot of adjustment at the end. I'm uh, polishing that down because the occlusion was high. And so with this product, especially, again, we're trying to reduce aerosols, we're trying to, re you know, really minimize the amount of time that the patient's in the chair. This precision placement and the delivery of it, in fact, in that it goes exactly where you place it and you're not getting a lot of excess is phenomenal. I, I cannot like highlight or stress that enough. If you haven't tried it, definitely try it because I think you're gonna love it. Um, it does have fluoride release as well. And it's a very transparent um, tooth colored material too. So it almost becomes invisible when you're looking at it on the tooth structure, which is also really, really nice for aesthetics and where I know some patients have concerns. And what I love about sealants during this time frame, and I'm so glad you brought it up, is I think we, we always think of children and we think of that, you know, newly erupted molar that we need to protect. 
But in this time where we may not see our patients for three, six months, or they've skipped an appointment for whatever reason, um, I think we need to really look at our adult patients and not just, you know, the gingival margin. We really need to look at the occlusion and take a look at, do they have deep pits and fissures? Are they having a hard time keeping those areas clean with just regular brushing and flossing? Um, can we be doing something else? by placing a sealant to really, you know, again, protect those areas from the biofilm and bacteria. And then this way they can maintain them and keep it clean themselves at home doing their regular care. So I really, um, really love this product, again, for the handling and, and the precision placement for sure. I think too, as a hygienist, when we're doing all of our assessment and we're looking at things, you know, using Canberra, the carries risk assessment forms, there are tools, if you don't know much about that, you know, you can Google that, but that gives you a guide on which clients, which patients you should maybe be thinking of these products for, you know, everybody can benefit from everything, but when we get back and we're looking at people that have had a caries lesion in the last three years, you know, those are our higher risk people and those are the people we want to really hone in and focus on their health histories have there been major changes are they at higher risk for things and you think we have to kind of keep that in perspective and we have to discuss all these things with our clients and with our doctors and with the teams that we work with and clients have a right to say no but we have to just try our best to educate them on the reasons why the treatment's needed and the rest will fall in because that's again our leadership our delivery our our attention to detail we've got to find ways to get people to say yes to treatments whether they're covered or they're not because they need them and it's not about selling care it's about selling what clients need we sell health and that's really what we're what we're all about and you have to use the right products that help you get the clients healthy but we have to go back to the reasons why these products are so important too to your point, yeah. uh, Carrie, one of the places that I love to see a pit and fissure sealant use is when you have on the lingual of a lateral where you've got that groove that's going sub G and you get that oh. little deep pocket right there. And if you fill that groove, all of a sudden there's a stop gap and the food is not trickling down and carrying on into that pocket. And sometimes you're very successful in once it's filled to stop that continual um, de deterioration in that you know, uh, almost probe-like area where it's so thin and so narrow and you can, you know, get rid of that problem very easily by utilizing the precision placement of, of this material. I agree. The buckles of sixes, the occlusions of sixes, especially as the kids are erupting, it's like, okay, we need to help prevent things because those can go from something that's okay to blowing up on us really, really quickly. So it's really, I agree. I agree. I love the product. And I, I think it also offers a unique opportunity too. So, you know, when we're talking about leadership and ways of becoming a leader within the practice, you know, I think sealant placement for me was a, a great way of saying, how can I think outside the box, right? How can I take a procedure that I do all the time that I've become very proficient in and now maybe because of regulations or restrictions, now I might not be able to do those steps or those procedures the way that I thought I could before. And so when I'm looking at maybe Helioseal F Plus, for example, so here's a sealant system that we do recommend that you etch the tooth surface to go ahead and, again, make sure that those resin tags really integrate nicely with the tooth so you have longevity of that sealant, right? And so you know, again, we're, we're trying to limit our air water syringe tip use. We're trying to reduce the amount of aerosols. So taking a micro brush, you know, taking the etchant and putting it into a little dappen dish and then taking a micro brush to apply it. Again, you're going to get the precision placement of that etchant. And then you can take a nice wet um, cotton roll or gauze or again, another wet micro brush go in and rinse it and then take a dry one and dry it rather than using our air water syringe. We're using, you know, different products, different things we have available in order to really, again, provide the standard of care that we know this patient needs and not look at the limitations that maybe we're being um, told that we have to have. And we're just thinking outside the box. We're think, you know, thinking of alternate ways to provide these standards of care and still make sure we're maintaining that optimal health for the patient. And so I love this, this product as an example of ways that you can think outside the box yeah. in order to, again, achieve that 
that standard of care that we want to provide without uh, with still being safe and meeting all the regulatory requirements that maybe are being imposed right now. And Tabitha, it's interesting you talk about the with regards to sealants and aerosols. Um, I remember when we were working with you once and we got to test it out and just that precision tip, it's so much more precise so it would minimize the use or the need to use anything to make any kind of adjustments after the fact. So furthermore, reducing any kind of unnecessary aerosolization. So that's, that's awesome. Thanks for addressing that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And the final step too with, with our Helioseal F plus placement is going to be your fluoride varnish which is really great. And again, I know we had asked the question earlier about when would we use fluoride varnish maybe versus Servitac Plus. And this is another great um, application of your fluoride varnish because again, a lot of these materials have fluoride incorporated into them. And by placing fluoride varnish onto that sealant surface as like the last step or at your recall appointments, you're really recharging that material so that the, again, the fluoride is going to be incorporated into the material, recharging it, and then slowly released over time. So that's another application where a fluoride varnish is going to be a nice um, nice kind of last step before the, the patient leaves and then something to look at, you know, if, when you're looking at the integrity of the sealants when they come back for recall. Wow, this has been such a great amount of information and just to bring to the surface, um, client specific needs versus, uh, versus what's yeah. available and thinking outside the box. And I'm sure a lot of us are really thinking about people we saw this week that, oh, well, I could have used that product and, and maybe uh, then um, do, getting the weekend to do some research and get your presentation ready for the office on next week is, is going to be a great way to follow this up. I agree. And one of the things is, as, as you were talking, I was thinking like as a patient coming in or as a client coming in, um, there's a lot of education that needs to happen, right? So I feel like what's happening is we, there's a lost opportunity um, where I really feel that, and I'm doing a presentation on this coming up at the end of the month for Edmonton, but about looking at your dental hygiene experience and looking at it um, the before experience, the during experience, the after experience. Okay, it's not just about that one appointment. It's, it's, it's beyond that. And when you want to have that trust, that loyal patient, that person who's thinking about you when they're, you know, sharing their experience to refer to, to talk about, um, I feel like there's a great opportunity for us to do a bit of pre-education before they come in. So like if you did um, did some education, like during this time we are concerned and you can share all about how they're linking perio to, to the pandemic and how, and how it's affecting those people to get you know, the worst possible um, um, symptoms with COVID, it's respiratory, all this. So to kind of educate our patients. And so we're going to do things differently. When you come in, we're going to do things differently. These are some of the things that we might, depending on your situation, we might be doing this with you, right? So then bring them, have them do a tour of your office. What does it look like? All that. And we're going to be using this, um, this new tool, this thing to help, you know, um, De decrease the amount of possible aerosols to help make you more comfortable to help our this appointment go more efficient more and then we you know depending on situation we might be applying this um, special varnish and this is why it's going to help you while you're not it sitting in our chair we might do this sealant um, to help you you know a slow release so kind of take that time educate them and then, you know, we're so excited to see you. It's thinking outside the box, right? Like most people don't do that. That's a wow experience. When If you had an office that was doing that, educating you, saying, you know, you have your hygiene appointment coming. This is what, this is what it's going to look like. These are the possibilities. Um, this is why, because otherwise it's a lot to do in an appointment and to get your, your whole, um, you know, the wording out and the education. It's like, you just want to go and go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Right. So having them already have a conversation and think about it before you come, we'd like you to watch this quick video and you could even record it on Zoom 
And it could be just you or it could be, you know, your hygiene team or whatever, right? But I do feel like there's an opportunity for us to really, um, that'll help us with our voice, with our patients, with our clients, right? It's like getting them prepared. And people are so on guard right now that it's going to help them feel even better. Like we've put this air purifier in, in our practice. This is going to help you. All these things we've done so that, and you know, this is probably the safest place for you to be. We're so, exactly. you know, so sterile, <laughs> but, and these are the things we want to implement so that when you leave us, that we're, we're going to be okay if we have extended period of time till we see you next time, you know? Um, I think too, as Tabitha said at the beginning, it's about interview, like I say, interviewing your clients, but you know, having that conversation and really listening to what it is. And when I talk to my clients, it's fear. They're fear. They're, they're afraid that we're going to have a second pandemic. They're afraid for this. And they're afraid that, that they were going to be away from me and they were going to have a problem. And they couldn't get help. And anyone that went for help didn't get the optimal, they got, you know, the, 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 maybe not the right option that they would like. And so this is a great opportunity to turn that into a conversation. Well, you know what, I hear what you're saying and you're right. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you what's going on in the future, but why don't we try to play this in your favor? Let's go ahead with those sealants. Let's go ahead and do this varnish. Let's go ahead and do, you know, that periotherapy. Let's go see the specialist, whatever they need. Let's do it now so that we can help prevent some of that fear from coming true. And I think that's really where we've got to change our message. And really, as you said, we've got to listen to what the clients are asking and, and thinking and maybe what they're not saying and have take that time before we start doing what we think we need to do for them. Yeah, well, yeah so and I think it, it's also about perception, right? And, and I think Kath, Kathleen, you had said it in the beginning, right? Where we're not just cleaning teeth we are looking at their overall health. We are concerned for their overall health. How does it link, right? How does your oral health link to your systemic health and what ways we are really evaluating you as a whole person in order to provide the optimal care um, and getting that perception of, of what a dental hygienist is really doing during those 45 minutes to an hour that they spend with you. Um, you know, what are we assessing? What are we evaluating? How are we helping? I, I completely wholeheartedly believe that this is a great opportunity for us to have those conversations and, and actively listen and provide that trust back into, into that relationship if it's, if it's been missing and so that they don't have those fears. Mm -hmm. Now, are there yeah. any questions, Beth, like things that have sort of prompted, um, how can I get samples? I saw somebody else ask, how can we get the varnish? And what is the difference between Servitex and Servitec Plus? Okay. So there's no, sorry, go ahead. That's probably- Yeah, so, that's okay. Um, so I can put a, a link up for sure for samples for the Servitec Plus. So I can share that um, on the chat box or I can send it to you, Beth, and we can send it out afterwards. Um, and so if anyone wants any samples of the Optergate, Helioseal F Plus or Servitec Plus, we can certainly um, provide those for you. Uh, the um, difference between Servitec and Servitec Plus is just the generation. So Servitec was our older generation. That was a product that had first come up and then we, we had done all the preliminary research with. And Servitac Plus, it was an enhanced product. So it was a little more uh, storage stable. It was also um, a little bit more forgiving in a saliva um, area, so where there was moisture. So even though we recommend that you dry the tooth surface, um, it is a little bit more tolerant when there is moisture there as well. So those are the, the two big differences between Servitac um, and Servitac Plus. Thank you. And then, yes, if you want to give me that link, then, um, Kath, maybe we can send that out. Yeah, we'll put it in the follow-up email with, here's the link to your personal portal, to watch it again, to get your quiz, to do your, to get your certificate, and here's the link to getting the samples. But you would get these products through your distributor, like Henry Shine, Sinclair, Patterson. Um, so that would be how you would order your products, right? Um, but we do, we'll send them something to connect them with, to try them in that for sure. Yeah. And I would say if you get a sample of Servitec Plus, you know, in order to really see the benefits, I would, I would try to pick a patient or two that 
that you know is going to be returning in a short period of time. So if you're going to do a re-eval of periodontal maintenance in, in three to four weeks, someone you're going to see, so you remember that you applied it and to see any tissue changes. Um, whereas if, if you wait the three months or six months, you might not see it right away. Um, for me, in practice, you know, I would use Servitec Plus for every root planning and scaling patient. And so what I found is after about a year, year and a half, the tissue just became more fibrous. It just, I, I can't explain it and I, and I can't wait for all of you to use it. Um, but you would see, you'd see slight differences, but at that year, year and a half mark after applying it those every three months, I really was seeing change. Um, just uh, it, it, you know, you didn't have the squishy tissue or the uh, exudate coming out. So, so it was it, again the unsung hero. I can't, I can't say that enough about that product. But, but for sure, um, definitely, please, you know, reach out and try those products. And and I'll share my contact information too if you if you have any questions on that. What's a great portfolio goal, right? To to apply that to your practice. Take some photos. And then, you know, continue to take some photos and be able to talk about how the tissue changes and the positiveness and totally reflective on, on how that would change your practice. Mm -hmm. but, but an awesome, you just laid out a beautiful goal for, for everybody here to apply to their practice. And what I'll do, Annalise, is I'll add to that some extra layering of learning, some oh. um, suggested courses that we have already that they can get you know a good four to five hours and have a nice goal so you just inspired me to do that for <laughs> i'm gonna add it to the list the list is so long yeah. um do you have any of the products beside you somebody was just asking if they can see like we have the optrigate but the proxit or the um hit which we didn't even talk about the helio seal or the Servitec plus do you have anything there I, I I don't have it right next to me, but if you give me like 30 seconds, I have it on my desk over there. I can run, oh. grab it, and bring it. Yeah, <laughs> I need to do that. Yeah, that's great. We're making her do the mad dash there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what else, ladies? Okay. Well, oh, that was fast. Yeah. Yeah, I talked. It was right there. I just didn't have it within arm's reach. <laughs> so. Servitec Plus, we have it both in tube delivery and single dose delivery. So the single dose kind of comes like this. I hope you guys can see it. Um, where you get a nice, again, single dose. It's enough for the entire dentition. And then it comes with a nice applicator micro brush. Um, let me just kind of move it a little so okay, you can see. You the optimate in, use gauze to dry off, and then would you just paint just the buckle, or would you do buckle, lingual? Nope, you want to make sure you, you coat as many surfaces as possible. It's a very flowable material, so it's very easy to apply. And you'll notice if you just kind of go close to the gum line and kind of, you know, scallop across the dentition, go ahead and do the buckle, then go ahead and do the lingual. It's going to flow so nicely, you're going to get it in a proximal. Um, if you have someone who has a lot of crowding, you could then go ahead and use floss to go ahead and get in, in between as well to make sure you're coating those inner proximals, but it flows really nicely. Um, it does also come, oh, I don't have it here, in a tube delivery as well. So you could dispense, like for your dentist who's looking to just maybe do that one tooth that they prepped and temporize, you could dispense one or two drops in order to do just a couple of teeth or a tooth at a time as well. And it's a much more economical delivery system. Um, but this, so the that would thing be great for an ailing implant. That would yeah, be exactly. Yep. Yep. And then our Helioseal F plus, we have it both in syringe form. Hopefully I'm doing it. I'm not doing it upside down and backwards on you. Um, and what I love is this, the cannula. Um, and the cannula is so thin, and I don't know if you can really see this, um, yeah. but, but it is so thin, and it, I actually took a index card, put the tip on, and wrote smile with it one time, 
and I could write my name with this material. Um, it that's how well the precision placement is. So um, it I just really love the the product. And like I said, and it, it goes exactly where you need it to go. So you can order it in Cavafil delivery as well. And the the Cavafils then are those unit doses. So depending on how you prefer. Um, but yeah, it's a great great product. With that type of precision, economically, that has to be a, a real improvement over a lot of other manufacturers. Yeah, less waste for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another yeah. thing to write in your case presentation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for having me on the program and, and, and just all of the dental hygienists out there, I am so inspired by all of you and how much I've learned and the wealth of knowledge everybody has and how we've been all taking this time to really learn more and become more educated and, and so that we're making those informed decisions. And, you know, I love the fact that the pandemic has led to these unique opportunities to, to raise our voices and to be heard in the office, at home, with our clients, our patients, it just, like I said, it's really inspiring to see everybody kind of come together. And, and I'm really excited to see what changes we're able to make as a group um, moving forward to during this time. So yeah, that's great. Well, we really enjoyed having you here. I feel like I could keep going for another hour, to be honest. I'm like, I want to talk about this and this and this one. <laughs> it's one o'clock already. So uh, we'll have to have you back. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. There's so many other products you have and so much knowledge. We sort of fine tune it into small a small segment, but you're so easy to talk with, and I have loved getting to know you more. And she's a wealth of knowledge. You should look her up and, and check her out. Um, but yes, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been wonderful. Yeah, thanks, Tabitha. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And so uh, we have a busy weekend ahead of us. Beth, you and I have the quality assurance weekend. So if anyone wants to join us. Um, if you're watching it live today, um, you can join us tomorrow. I'm doing a Saturday morning session. You're doing Sunday morning. And then the two of us are getting on for a Q&A, which will be fun, um, Sunday at 2? Yes. Yeah. Following the morning session, we'll get on. Yeah. And you've been busy doing laser. You did laser last night. This part yeah. of your theory. And, and then we're doing the hands-on, Tabitha. So we're doing, um, it's like our hands-on courses. We're doing the theory online and then we're getting together at RDHU which is in Burlington for the hands-on so um, and Anna Louise you've really changed your programs like Anna Louise does a lot of our most of them of the instrumentation um, courses so um, and we've, we're always getting people asking can we you know do you offer that here and so you can do the theory part so if you're living in BC or Halifax or if you're from the states we're now case approved can i say that carrie or how do we say that we are you, you mm -hmm. offer level two courses that offer pace yes they're, they're not we offer level two courses that offer a pace approval mm -hmm. so which means our american friends can now be with us which is huge dentists cannot be with us and instead of having a core three they can have a core two um, so Anna Louise, like your course is coming up with instrumentation and I talk to dental hygienists every day. Um, I'm sharing the phones, the phones are coming to me as well. And people are finding that because they're not, most people are not doing ultrasonics. So they feel like I need help with sharpening. So this afternoon, Beth and I are doing a sharpening course for an office, um, hands-on, and we're going to do live with, with the group, with the hygiene department. Um, you're doing instrumentation to help people post COVID get back their, their skills and because, you know, most people don't want to just hand scale, but you have, you know, you sharp instruments, you know, the LM has a sharp and free, you have so many techniques and, and things you're going to help people with. Or if you are, aren't using sharp and free, learn to sharpen your instruments and make sure they're sharp every time. Do not compromise. Um, and then, you know, practice profile, add pie, you two, Beth and Carrie, like that's going to be fabulous when you're doing your process of care. Yeah. Um, of course, that's, and I like, I like the name fall into the process, is it? Fall into the process of care, yeah? Fall in love with, fall in love with the process. Fall in love with it. <laughs> because in, um, Tabitha, in Ontario, we have a learning portfolio, and we had a lot of discrepancies um, or deficiencies this year, and uh, so a lot, we saw a lot of the practice profile 
um, people were, you know, having a hard time with that. So if for those who are submitting, I always recommend the um, process of care course, quality assurance course, documentation with Anne Louise. Um, there's so much that we're doing. We have so much coming up. So uh, thanks again, ladies, and for putting in so much effort and research and you know, every, every time you do a program, you're still spending hours before you do it. Even if you did it last month, you're still spending hours as things are changing constantly, right? So, um, but we love what we do. Thankfully, we we have each other and it's been a wonderful experience and I love the RDHU. And uh, so thank you everybody for, for being here today with us. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's no. smile because I'm going to use this as a picture. When's our next view, Kathleen? When's our next view? <laughs> the next one is coming up in October. October, great. Yes, so we just, we'll send the date and the topic and all that. Perfect. That's coming out soon. So we'll see everybody next month. Yes, we will. Yep. Right. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.